Sports Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about observations from the Super Bowl. Please like and subscribe and I'm going to give this podcast to my brother. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles are ringless no more as they came out on top victorious in the Super Bowl 52. So Philadelphia gains their first world championship since 1960 in the era of Norm Van Brocklin and Chuck Bednarik at linebacker. The Philadelphia Eagles have finally flown all the way to the top of the NFL. But the Eagles, some observations that I've made from that game, uh, I think the Philadelphia Eagles were the more aggressive team in this game and I think that's a big reason why they won. The play where Zach Ertz threw the ball, the play where the ball was thrown to Nick Foles, the quarterback, for the touchdown, making Nick Foles the first quarterback in Super Bowl history to throw to receive a touchdown catch in the 52-year history of the Super Bowl. And I think the Philadelphia Eagles were the more aggressive team. I think Tom Brady, even though he threw for 500 yards, I think he was uh, thoroughly outplayed by halftime. And that's not just from the the passing end, it's from the receiving end as well. Um, Nick Foles caught a touchdown pass. Tom Brady dropped his pass in the Super Bowl. And so I think that's a big, uh, I think that was a big, big play there. The catch by... Falls in the end zone and the drop by Brady. But well, Tom Brady did throw for over 500 yards. But the Philadelphia Eagles, world champions, the more aggressive team, won the Super Bowl. The team that didn't send out the kicker on fourth down and goal. Instead, they went for the jugular. They went for the end zone, and that's why the the Eagles are walking off as as world champions. Philadelphia wins their first Super Bowl and for Tom Brady the wait for ring number six will have to begin again but it was a a very exciting Super Bowl and if you watched it hoping New England would lose I guess you got your wish the first Patriot lost Tom Brady now falling to one and three against the NFC East in the Super Bowl the two losses the two losses to the Giants and lost now to to the Eagles in the Super Bowl and of course the Eagles winning the Super Bowl and now the mass exodus has begun from Philadelphia at least in the coaching staff Frank Reich who led the biggest comeback in NFL history and the biggest comeback in college football history will now be the next head coach of the Indianapolis Colts a uh, week after Josh McDaniels, uh, the Patriots offensive coordinator, uh, was apparently going to become the head coach and then backed out of the agreement. But the Colts will now have the offensive coordinator of the Eagles, Frank Reich, will now become the next head coach of the Colts, a five-year contract. And so the Colts have a good young core of talent, but getting them... To the next level to become the next a team like Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, the Colts have a ways to go to enter that level. But they have some good pieces, especially at the quarterback position, Andrew Luck. I still think he's going to be a star in the NFL. He had a down year last year when he didn't even take the field, but I believe in Andrew Luck. There's no luck needed in Indianapolis for the Colts to turn this around. So the Major League Baseball free agent market has been moving at about a snail's pace in regard to the free agents that have been signing with other teams this season. Uh, But one big move did just break. Um, The Cubs have a new toy in the rotation, Yu Darvish, taking his talents from Los Angeles to the north side of Chicago. The long-rumored move is finally going to happen, Yu Darvish taking his talents to Wrigleyville and instantly uh, becoming a part of another team and has its goals set on hoisting the World Series trophy. But the way that Hugh Darvish melted down last year against the Astros, but hopefully the Cubs have plenty of time 
to figure out if that was an anomaly or if there's something deeper uh, going on with Mr. U. Darvish. Uh, he was a decent starter in the National League. I predicted that he would do well in the National League, taking his talents away from Texas Rangers and the American League, and he took the Dodgers to the World Series uh, for the first time since 88. And so the Dodgers were, were so close to winning. Uh, they lost Game 7 at home to the Astros, and obviously a big loss for the Dodgers as well. Hugh Darvish not coming back to that to that spacious ballpark in L.A. Overall, I like this move, and I feel like Darvish will help keep the Cubs competitive. Uh, the Cubs, as they're constructed right now, they're probably a 90-win team. And if I had to go in the battle with this team as it's constructed now, I'd like my chances over how they would fare over the course of the season. Uh, so, welcome to Wrigley, you Darvish. I think you're going to like it there. Time for a movie review. Uh, I'm going to review Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. And this was a movie that I really enjoyed. And I actually really enjoyed Jumanji. I, thought I actually liked it more than I liked uh, Star Wars. I didn't think I would like a movie more than Star Wars this year at the box office. But uh, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, they are hilarious in this movie. Uh, go ahead, if you haven't seen it yet, go go see it. It's hilarious. And if you ask me which movie I would go see again, Jumanji or Star Wars, I would pick Jumanji over Star Wars. I thought Jumanji was really well acted, really well done. The premise was a bit interesting about how they found the old video game controller, and then they, when they entered the game, that's when the fun begins from there it's it's hilarious and I would give it five stars two thumbs up whatever you uh, whatever rating system you 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 want to give it ten out of ten it's really good go see it so now in the sports world we are at that strange point of the year there's no more football on the horizon until August um, baseball season hasn't really started yet spring training is still a couple weeks away Two months from the start of the season and the NBA season, well, I don't really get into the NBA season really. Uh, their postseason doesn't start till April, uh, till a couple months away, and I'm still unconvinced that anybody other than the Warriors or the Cavaliers will be the last two teams in the NBA Finals, even though the Cavaliers just made a huge trade. To try to keep LeBron James happy and keep him in Cleveland. Try to prevent LeBron from pulling another decision and leaving Cleveland again. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, but the NBA they have a problem in the rest of the league. The NBA has two very powerful teams right now, the Warriors and the Cavaliers, and much how many many NFL fans probably hate watch the Patriots. I have a feeling a lot of NBA fans probably hate watch Golden State this year. Um, yeah, because uh, I still think the Spurs would have had a shot at them if they had been healthy last year. Uh, but this year, I don't see anybody really stopping Golden State. Um, maybe a team like the Rockets, they might have a good shot. But anybody outside of that, I don't really see anybody dethroning the Warriors. They are too good. They are have too much talent. They have too many, too much great coaching out of Steve Kerr, and the Warriors are a force to be reckoned with. This is probably like watching the Michael Jordan Bulls of the '90s. They were too good, and nobody could stop them. The only thing that stopped the Bulls from becoming more dominant in the '90s was the work stoppage that led to Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan stepping away from the NBA and deciding to go play baseball for a couple of seasons. Uh, the only thing stopping the Bulls from being more dominant than they were of the 90s. But anyway, that remains to be seen. A couple of months before baseball season gets underway, NBA season is underway. March Madness is uh, three weeks away from filling out a bracket. Uh, so we're at this strange point in the year where there really is nothing going on major 
in the sports world other than basketball, college and pro. And it's always a strange point in the year. It's like, what is somebody who, what is somebody who's only like football only? Do they just, I guess they just sit sit around and wait for August and preseason football to happen. Uh, Thanks for listening to the Powers on Sports podcast. Please like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter link will be in the description. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time at the next podcast. Bye!